Wow. So it's going to be... Spectacular. Mm -hmm. It's going to be quite the dress. The gown's really not going to make her win. It's, it's her face, honestly. Now the gown helps. Yeah, the gown <laughs> helps to get her noticed, but, I mean, once they sit down with interview with her, the face sells the rest. This is the pageant to go down south and win. Mm -hmm. When you win this one... You have it. You ha you made it. Well, we're and, winning. We're and, going for the gusto. <laughs> and, and, and Shane's putting all his eggs in that basket. Now, Monique, do you have the gels? Well, there's yeah. one that's like a half cup, and what it does is it just gives you a push-up, and there's one that actually fills the cup up more. See what you feel more See comfortable with. I'd rather you with. have My own your own and not mine, you know. One of the contestants knew I had them, and she asked me at a pageant, can I borrow your um, silicone cups? And I said, no. Even she being my daughter, I still feel like it's like wearing my underwear. <laughs> that could be scary. It's, it's the least expensive way without doing the implants, because I like this much better than telling a girl she should go get implants. This is safe. So. Okay, which? And this is the cup <laughs> enhancer. It covers basically your whole bust. Mm -hmm. And it kind of enhances all the way around. With this, basically, you put it kind of at really at the tip of your bust, and it kind of pushes you up, where this one kind of fills out and gives you more rounded effect. We'll see which looks and better. What's nicer, kind of what's nicer about this type of thing is it moves with you, where bra cups at some point kind of look stiff, yeah. especially in a bathing suit, and they almost give you a line where this, you know, makes your bust move and makes it look more natural. And All those right. adjust to your body temperature, Correct. right? They... Correct. And they have what they call a stay put. It's like a, it's like a two-sided tape, too, that you can put it on and stick it to you, too. All right. Okay. I'll get Lena. The seamstress' oh. name's Lena, so I'll have her help you out with those, too. Okay. And the best way to do your bust is when you go in there is <laughs> bend, over. bend over and put them in. What do you have in, Marie? The whole thing or the no, push up? Push up in one and hold in the other. Oh. So we're doing the test to see oh, which one okay. actually works, works better. better. I'm saying that your right, my left works better. Okay, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. This one's a uh, full cup The one. full cup, because you're pushing out a little bit more here, you're filling it out more here, where this one, you're kind of off to one side, where this one, you're getting more of a rounded effect. You want some here. big. Want some, I have, uh, that's a large. You want to try an extra large? No. That would make it big. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't know. He just said he wants, he wants a lot. I said, gee. <laughs> you don't know, you never know what catches a certain judge's eye. He said it's an incredible dress. I love this one shoulder dresses. It shows off a figure. I like it. No, I like the shape. Oh my God, I don't have to put boobs in it. No, these are my boobs. I think she might need something to... No! Maybe you can put cups in it. Oh, yeah, those well, would work. Let, let her put okay. something in there and let's see what it looks like. Oh, she cries myself at the IMU. It's so not that they're not... They're okay, but... But if you want to compete, it's a total package. You have to have the total package. All right, do a tea with your feet. Break your ankle. Now suck your stomach in. That's gonna make you look thinner and sexier, especially with the USA contest coming up. So if that back hand is hidden, we're getting this curve in between your bust and your hips. What about your shoulders? If you turn your shoulders out, what happens? Does that look out of whack? Okay, it's this. You're popping up. Okay. Sit down on it, sit back. Not that far back. Don't drop your back, but drop your hiney. I want you to walk from here to that other mirror, and I want you to stop in front of the mirror and get in stance like you would on stage, okay? If I were a judge and I saw that, I'd think you weren't focused, you were not concentrating, and I count off. I mean, you can't sit and adjust. Okay. You have to walk into it, boom, that's it. You have to make sure you feel what you hit. Feel it, Morgan, you have to feel the position. That's the only way you're gonna know, because when you're on stage, there is no mirror. And you're not gonna have me to tell you what you're doing wrong. Walk into it, boom, that's it. It's a pageant. You know, what else do I have to do but walk across the stage? And she told me how to get in stance. It was the hardest thing. My stomach hurt, my rear end hurt, my shoulders were tight, and it was uncomfortable. How much weight have you lost? Five, nine pounds. Nine pounds? 
What have you been eating? Any french fries? No, no french fries. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I'm 12 years old, and like all of these, I got done year before last. I was 10. <laughs> her every weekend so since she's been four so it's not that bad of a shock to me you know? I mean when you when you I guess when you're doing it every weekend and and they look like that's what they look like you know I mean with, this is bad to say but I don't make sure we take her makeup off and so sometimes on Sunday mornings when she gets up she still looks like that so my hair will be done exactly like that, and so my makeup. It, I mean, it's, it stays. It's, it'll stay for days if you don't brush it out and take it off. I mean, my mama will tease my hair so tight that it'll just stay for three days, and she'll spray it. <gasps> we started in pageants because Cherie was has a bad heart, and a friend of ours kept saying, well, she don't have to do anything but just walk across the stage. That's it. All she's got to do is walk across the stage. Because when she was little, she didn't have any breath because she hadn't had a corrective surgery. She said, all she's got to do is walk across the stage. That's it. Well, it turned out to be a lot more than just walking across the stage. <laughs> These are extensions. And everybody uses them. This is 100% human hair. Three-fourths of the girls that'll be down there tonight will have extensions in their hair. <laughs> Tail over. over. And this is how we get prepared for a pageant. Some, some people use it to make it longer. Some people use it for fullness. And, depend, and depending on where you're at, whatever you, whatever you desire. It's just like fingernails or padding your boobs. You can't stand up there and compete against girls who have 10 no, tons of hair. Fair. It's like standing up there with girls that have 10 tons of boobs and you don't have and you're flat chested. Yeah. You know, it's just, this is getting dressed up. It's costume, it's terrible. I like my own hair. <laughs> <laughs> and see, last weekend we didn't put Cherie's hair in when we competed, so. And what did we get, Cherie? Nothing. Oh, no. Well, we got. No. I got one round more row. No, you're hurting me. I know. You're hurting me. Well, just scream all you want. Go ahead. I can't because if I scream, I run my makeup. Well, not scream, I'm just crying. Scream, scream. Do you just tend to hurt it? It's not a big deal, scream. Hurts to be beautiful. Y'all need to hurry up. You need to hush. Mama, no, that looks stupid. Well, just what do you want tonight? You don't want me to tease it, but you don't want it up there, but you don't want it flat. Now, take your choice. I'm either going to have to tease the heck out of it to get the height, or we're going to go with a flat head. It's up to you, because I'm not going to listen to you whine. It hurts, Mama. Well, just grin and bear it. Grab no, onto the chair. It hurts. Well, then, quit complaining about it being Mommy. flat. I'm not complaining about it being flat. You. Don't pick. Don't pick. I'm not. Hey, Madison, when Mama gets through with my hair, I'll take you out there. Okay? You can watch your sister, okay? That was very sweet of you. Thank you. One minute I'm mean, and the next I'm like really sweet. But at school, I'm always sweet. <laughs> it's just when I get in that car, <laughs> I gotta let it out. <laughs> I gotta let it go. Because some people would just get on my nerves and they would eat away at me and I can't say anything about it at school. So when I get in the car, I just gotta let it go. <laughs> What's the main thing? Um, what is the main thing? A lot of the times I feel left out, though. I mean, not like all the time, but some of the times, like when my friends, they go off, I feel like they know that I'm there. I mean, it's just that they don't even notice me, you know? And I feel like I'm left out. 
and it would just tear my guts up. Our photogenic winner is Cherie Antoinette the Dream. And our winner is Cherie Antoinette the Dream, the Chipotle Princess. I only have one girlfriend, and the rest of them are boys. And girls just. I don't know. <laughs> They're not attracted to me. I get feelings in my gut, you know? It would, like, tell me something, you know, like, if this person doesn't like me, I better stay away from them, or this person really likes me, so I better hang out with her. I've done everything but walk across that stage with her. I take every step she takes, I'm taking it right along with her. <laughs> so, and if she falls, I fall. If she, if she wins, I win. If she loses, I lose. But um, I'm there to pick her up, always, every time. I was scared about it because of the stereotypes that are presented with the beauty pageant. The blonde, the, the airhead, the no brains. I did not want to present myself as that type of a person. So I've always just wanted people to look at me and say smart instead of pretty. And, a beauty pageant just did not seem to fit that, so that scared me a lot. It's the competition. You put yourself forward and you have to say, I'm going to be my best. And if my best isn't good enough, then it's not. And that makes me nervous. I'm wondering about this chick over here. Her best might be better than my best. But you can't let anybody else know that they're scared. You know? First runner-up, Candace Michelle Spire. And our winner is Miss Chitlin Morgan Lacey Smith. So, are you Miss Chitlin Strutt? Yeah. Miss Hog Intestines. That's the title they give you? Chitlin. All right. Okay. Yeah, one more. You mind holding Chitlin? Yeah, some, some Chitlin queens don't touch Chitlin. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and... Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead and do me a Chitlin. No, no, okay. <laughs> I want you to see me today. I don't know, it's not depressing, but it's kind of, it's just really sad thinking that I will no longer be the shining star queen, you know? Now this time, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be having Monique Jones give up her title in her 14 over age category. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Monique Jones. <laughs> I'm 
unless she makes me like a queen of queens where I can come back every year and still be a queen. I'm pretty much nothing after this. I'll be nothing. <laughs> I'll be a has-been in the Shining Star system. It's time to go for bigger and better things. Now that we are going to compete in a pageant down south, which is a big national, and there's a lot of prize money involved, we have to be able to compete with what they're doing there. We did hook up with Shane King, who's coaching Monique, and she knows the chance to practice those routines. He gave her new routines. Her modeling for up here is great, but going to the south, it's different, and different things are expected. So it's a lot of shaking and it's a lot of dance modeling. So you'd want to like turn and you'd want to like show your hat or you can show your, you know, I have fringe on mine on the side. So I'd show my fringe and you always make sure that, you know, you keep your feet in model stance. That's very big. Definitely keep moving. Try not to stop for too long because you want to keep the fringe moving as long as possible. That's what they've told me since I was six years old. Keep the fringe moving as long as you possibly can. Your beauty is fine, but everybody's beautiful. The modeling, you've got to have the modeling. We're going to compete with the big girls. When she was five and she had surgery, her brain froze. They froze the cortex of her brain because she was in surgery for 18 hours. And when she woke up and came out of the anesthesia completely, it was like she was retarded. All her fine motor skills were gone. She had to learn to walk. She had to learn to write. She had to learn to eat again. Every time we sit down to the table, she'd spill her drink, knock her plate over. She had her hand shook like this. She her head hung, her, her tongue was out of her mouth. You know, I mean, it was it was terrible. It was it was the worst time in our life. And pageants helped her get back. It really did. She, I would, I would still put her in pageants, and for about three years, her hands would shake on stage. See, that's where she got her whole closed up, and that's her chest too. Scars. And then I have one. So you can undo just a little bit. See, it starts right there, and it goes all the way down. Yeah, I've had seven open heart surgeries. I was born without a single ventricle, a single atrium, one pulmonary on the right side and none on the left, and all that, and there's plastic. Half of my heart's plastic, too. Whoa. <laughs> and you ain't figured out what you're gonna do yet. Time's running out, girl. But you got to come out there with a bind. You're walking out, come on. Know what to do, Mama. Do your regular routine. Don't take your jacket off, just mimic it. No, I can't. Come on. One, two, three, bam, bam, cross turn. Break it down. Stop and look at us, okay? And then go into it. Ooh, ooh, spinning it. Break it down. One, two, three, come down here. Come out some. When you come down through there, don't come down through there like this. Look, it's like this. No, no, no. It's not what I was gonna do. Well, whatever you're gonna do, okay? Then when you get here, you do your hat move, okay? Back, kick it, one, two, three, okay? One, two, three, take your jacket off. All right, whatever. When you get down in front of them, that's when you got to work them, okay? When you're coming over this way, stop. Look over under your hat. Push it down, then go on. Then when you come over here, come. Don't take the jacket off till you get over here, Dan. Would that be all right? No. You don't have to worry about it, Dan. Come on, Mom. I'm so used to taking it off in the middle. All right, well, let's do this, then. So? After you do this, you know, and then you pop, then you kick it, and you come here. How about turn around, do our old move. One, two, three. Wait Pull it back. Minute. Pull it back. Have to wait one minute. Down here. Big circle. Big walking circle. Over to here. Stop. Halfway to that last step. 
Okay. One, two, inside back. Whoosh down and come on over here. Take your jacket off, throw it over your shoulder. Give it to him, come back. Around here, kick it, and you're out of there. And of course, there are a lot of them. <laughs> this is from Carolina Precious Angels. A lot of these are from pageants that I don't even know. <laughs> I don't remember what they were from. This is my trophy room, and um, this is most of my trophies. I still have some trophies down in my basement. The only time you really ever use the scepter is when you're during the crowning and when you take pictures, so they never actually see it again. It's the crown that's important, and I always wanted a crown like that. That was my dream, to have a crown, that big and round crown. Well, actually, have you ever walked with a book on your head? That's exactly what it feels like. You can't tilt your head far too back, and you can't tilt it forward too much. It's kind of hard to balance, but that's what it looks like. I'd like to get as far as I could. Um, Miss Universe would be great, Miss um, USA, Miss America. I've watched since I was little every single pageant. A lot of girls win a lot of titles, and it's really fun because they like when you finally beat them or when you finally get that title, you feel real good because you're like, wow, she's real hard to compete against, and I finally did it. I finally beat her. It's not competition. We want to be all as one, but we want to, you know, be competitive more. That's basically the, the fun of it, also. Transcend all the sucks and the hurts, sink into the mist, breathe of our eyes. I don't know, we just figured I do better when I have long hair than when I have short hair. So, even though it's not that fun, you know, to think that you have to add stuff to your hair just to be in the competition. Some here come from all these um, different countries. You know, some women in some countries are poor and they sell their hair. This is more like Caucasian here. You know, because it's so straight. It's... I say it's hers. She, she bought it. I say it's hers. African American and half Italian, so most of my traits came from the, the black side, but I don't have a problem. This is how it is. It's usually a lot curled in this, but um, when I put you on, I have to pull on them so they're not so tight. All she does is she takes a blow dryer, heat um, very high, and there's gonna be smoke from my hair because it burns. She pulls on it and pulls on it and pulls on it and makes it as straight as possible. Pulls and pulls on it for about a good half an hour. She pulls it straight, pulls it straight, pulls it straight. It hurts afterwards. You get like sensitive spots, but you get used to them after a while. My coach, Shane King, said that um, he didn't it would be a good idea because my eyes are so dark that they really don't show up that much on stage. So he thinks that if I had lighter ones, it would look more exotic. I never really ever saw that many dark people with blue eyes. OK, 
curve one in. So now we have both of them and the smooth blue eyes. Well, for 15 years of my life, I've had dark brown eyes, and when, ever since I was little, I've always said, Mom, I always want blue eyes, and people may have a problem with it because they're thinking, oh, well, that's your quote-unquote white side of you, but I don't think of it like I have a certain black side and I have a white side or that just because I'm half black that I have to always act black and be black. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you look up the term black in the dictionary, you don't there's no way in how to be black. That's a color, you know, and people always tell me, you know, why don't you act your race? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe I'm half black and half white, so, you know what I mean? I never understood what people always thought that you had to act your color. How, how, I mean, honestly, do you know how white people act? Do you know how black people act? No, people act differently. Not that I don't like my nose, it doesn't fit on my face. This nose should have been on somebody else. I think it's fine when I'm serious, but when I smile, I think that because of my background, because my father's um, black, that I got blessed with a really wide nose. I think I'm just gonna kind of give my nose like some liposuction, basically, I guess, just to make it a little bit thinner. Not a lot, I mean, I don't want like a Michael Jackson nose or anything like that. You take a light strip down the top of your nose and put dark on each side so that the light hits the lighter strip and it appears slender. Most of the girls need to smile when they put on the lip liner and usually have to draw bigger top lips because they lose half of their top lip when they smile on stage. Smile, Morgan. Say so you still have top lip. And I mean, you've got so much makeup on you. I mean, you could put your hand on your face and just see it and you're just like, oh, I can't stand wearing a lot of makeup. I hate it. But, I mean, you've got to. I mean, you don't have a choice. And all the hairspray and, oh, it just makes me sick having to get it all off worse than it is trying to put it on. And the pantyhose, which are so annoying, which hurt. And then you've got dresses that you can't sit down in because they'll wrinkle. It drives me nuts. I hate, I remember I hated dresses because they itched. They bugged me. And your mom always used to tell you, you got to sit proper, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. And I didn't want to do any of it. You probably could have never got me one of these when I was little probably would have tied me down to get me one of these. And if he did, I'd probably been out in the dirt wallering in it. We're going to introduce our judges in right quick, and then we're going to get on with the other pageants. We have Miss Andrea Bright. She has been a contestant in pageants for five years. Her titles include Miss South Carolina Poultry Queen, Miss Peanut Princess, Miss Southern Belle, and she is an ambassador to Miss South Carolina World Pageant. Please welcome Andrea Bright. It was a big tomboy. It was the go-karts. It was on the trampoline, on motorcycles, playing football. I wanted to get dirty. I mean, my Barbies, I love my Barbies, but I used to rip their heads off. And pretty much 12 or 13 is when I kind of grew out of that stage and decided, well, I need to kind of grow up and be a girl like I was supposed to be when I was born. <laughs> you start getting interested in uh, boys. Puberty had a lot to do with it, so probably. I was quite on the heavy side when I was a little girl. I used to get picked on all the time, and I used to cry and everything. And then I reckon right when puberty hit in, I, I don't even remember losing the weight or anything. All I remember is just next thing I knew, I, it was like almost waking up one morning and I was totally different. That's why I'm in it today. You know, I mean, I've grown up so much that, you know, I have a good time at being the person that I turned out to be. I'm really totally different from what I was when I was a little girl. <laughs> totally. But not drastically at all. And your new Little Miss Panther Pride is contestant number 11. <laughs> Remember that. You need every point you can get. Okay. Okay. 
謝先哥。Hello, 大家好，我係林麗怡，我今年十五歲，喺張 high school 讀緊書。冇嘅，我梗係有請教啦，即係但係都要你聽話，點得㗎？我梗係請個誒個女啫。First, there's conflict because she's raised from a very traditional Chinese family, but she also know that there's a lot of temptations out there as we kids are growing up, and so she try to get control of it, but yet she knows when she can't. Control it too much, then she has to let go of it. I like to be independent, you know. I don't like people telling me what to do. I and I feel like I can take care of myself. And she grew up in China, so it's much different from America. And my grandma was very strict on her. Like when grandma says you stay home, she stays home. We're living in America, so I want to make my own decisions and stuff. So she has learned to learn the American ways, but it's really different. No, no, no. You go to the north, but don't go to the south. Okay. 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 Okay.
But they have pageant clothes in here from the time they were four. This one's red, a traditional color, Chinese, and it's a traditional cut, a Mandarin cut. Yeah. These dresses are called kpo, and when they get married, they wear these. These are very fancy. They're considered to be very fancy, like a wedding dress in China. I think he said the price of the yellow gown was 2500 But you know what? It just means that we graduated up another $500, because her last couple of gowns were like 2000 The pink one, that was 1700 and then the yellow one before that that was like a thousand so I guess her taste keeps improving maybe <laughs> um, well my brother lived at home for seven, 17 years and he's multiply handicapped and mentally retarded so I mean I wasn't I couldn't always be the center of attention even though I was a baby of the family I always had to act more mature because I had helped my mom take him around and cart him around places and I mean he has a brain mentality of an 18 month old baby so it's basically having a five foot, 18 month old baby. You know, she learned how to change his diapers, feed him. She could give him his medication. She would give him a bath. You had to dress him. That was the reason why I finally made the decision to put him in residential care because it was getting more and more difficult. Though he's tiny, very, very strong, and it, it just takes so much. He needs one-on-one -on -one 24 hours a day. You know, she sacrificed for a very long time as a little girl, not being able to do certain things or go certain places or have certain things. And she always accepted it. And I'm not saying that she never got angry. There were times when she would say something like, you know, oh, mom, you know, sometimes I wish I didn't have a brother like this, you know? And I'd say to her, well, you know what? You do. You do. Well, a lot of girls think of me as like a role model. But I think that, not that I don't want to be someone's role model, but I'm 15 and there's not really a lot that I've done yet. I mean, I've, I've survived two years of high school. That's basically all I've done so far. When I see a little girl who looks at me, I want them to know that I didn't just get here. Someone didn't just drop me off here and I was this, you know, this big winner. That it took me a long time to get where I am today and that it's taken a lot of time, a lot of practice, a lot of money to get here. If they really want to be where I am now, they need to learn that they have to practice. They can't just show up to pageant and say, oh, I can win this pageant, because that's not the way it is. There's always going to be someone out there that is either just as good as you or may even be better than you. It's just like anybody going to play football on the weekends or basketball or whatever it might be. It's just something for girls to do, because, I mean, there's not a whole lot of hobbies that girls like to do. Either you're a tomboy, you play softball and stuff like that, or either you're just going to be a dud and don't do nothing. It's a hang out with your friends. It does a lot for you. It gives you self-confidence. It gives you confidence that, you know, you're yourself, and you can go out there and you can present yourself for who you are. I don't do it for the crowns and for the banners. I do it to get money for college. I'm not going to say it's an easy thing to get money for, but it's a good challenge for me. Now that's what we're gearing for, more pageants that um, she has the opportunity to win some sizable cash or scholarship money or, or anything. Um, you know, I've only got a couple of years to get ready before she goes off to college and try and figure out where is this going to come from. Unfortunately, she hasn't named any cheap colleges that she'd like to attend. So unless in the meantime I hit the lottery or, you know, find a rich man, I'm in trouble. So. Or I find a rich man. What else comes first? And you're way too young for that. <laughs> I thought you were never going to get married. Oh, I didn't say I had to marry him. Well, I I, 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 you're not I even, you, you're not, you don't even have permission to date yet. <laughs> There's no one in the world that is perfect that can go to a pageant every single weekend and win. Because it's not always the same judges every single weekend. One judge one weekend might think, you know, wow, she's gorgeous. Next weekend, another judge might be like, yeah, well, she's, she's okay. I mean, it's so different than sports because if you're good, you're good and you'll always be good. It's not like that in pageants. You're not judged on how high you can jump or how fast you can run or how many goals you can score in a game. There's always going to be someone out there better than you. And my mother's always told me that. She's like, you know, you can never feel that you're the best. 
that's not what you should feel. You should feel that you're the best for yourself, but you're never better than anybody else. I mean, when I walk into a pageant, I don't go, oh, I can beat her. You never know. You never know. Heaven knows the way things go. If there's nothing to lose, there's nothing to show. And I can't even hide behind me. The trouble seems to start in the heart. And it's part of life to get torn apart. And I'm just trying, trying to find me. to this judge, same scales, <laughs> went down the whole tr tremendous lot. Um, beauty, 15, poise, 16, appearance, 15. Gown is great color, but too short, and slip is showing. Total score, 61. <laughs> Those scores, I, 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 I really don't know. It's, it's, it's terrifying. I'm still recovering over. I talk about it every day. I, I, I don't know what I wanted to do. I really, I felt so bad. It's like one judge killed me. <laughs> she, she, it's like she just took a gun and was like, boom. That's what they do. One judge can really tear you up, can tear you up. <laughs> Okay, and this is where you need to break your leg. You need to make that leg look as sexy as possible, okay? Because your legs are not that long, considering. To make sure the toe is pressed. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> All right, pop your toe. The extra three pounds we couldn't get off the floor state. <laughs> That's nine out of 12. That's nine out of, okay. <laughs> okay. You don't want them to, to focus in on your thighs. I mean, we all have good parts and bad parts. That's the part that we're trying to work on to get tired, because you want that muscle to pop out. Do your breasts kind of hinder you from poking them out, or do you? I don't know. You're hunching, and when you hunch, it's like you're trying to hide what I guy gave you. I'm trying to hide this. Well, I'm not worried about your hiney. Okay. They're not seeing your hiney. Okay. They're seeing your front. Okay. Are you worried about that? Not really. No? Well, then, poke it out a little bit, then. <laughs> Stomach in. Don't pull your shoulders up, because if you pull your shoulders up, that's going to get you all out of whack. So you've got to keep it back, but not purposely back. But in swimsuit, they know this is when you're nervous. You want to look as relaxed as possible. But a lot of girls use um, duct tape to duct to tape their boobs up to get it to stay and give them cleavage. And I done it one time, and I'll tell you, I'll never do it again. It hurts. It just pulls. It takes really two people, and then you will pretty much push your boobs, and somebody else will tape you underneath, and it keeps them right where you had it. And it's it's oh, it's painful. Way up here, and push, push in, way in, and we'll pull from here. Push in tight from. Oh. I know it's gonna hurt. I'm just waiting here to take it off. <laughs> You think that hurts? It hurts to be beautiful. Yeah. You start from like right underneath your um, armpit and around. It's just kind of like a little smiley face kind of a look right underneath there just to get them to hold up. Okay, dress. I need that real tight. I love it. Did you feel secure? Oh my. This is a whole new sensation. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you go, baby. I have cleaned it. Ha ha, no one's gonna believe it. Huh? Three quarters of it's not even mine. Doesn't have to be. Okay. So. Juice. Juice. You know what? Where's my camera here? Jeez. Okay, let's go. We waxed my bikini line at home. <laughs> I was mad. You put hot wax on it, and then you stuck a piece of tape and you snatched it off, and it hurt.
Arm Grip is a lifesaver for the bathing suit competition. It's a sticky spray, wonderful for spraying your rear end and pulling that bathing suit so you can't see. You have to pull the bottom of the bathing suit, you have to kind of pull it up and you spray on your behind and then you place it exactly where you're going to. Basically, it's butt stick. And what it does is it makes sure that your bathing suit doesn't ride up on you. But it's actually body adhesive and basically it's used for people who have toupees and they stick it on with this and they stick their toupees on. Contestant number 12, Morgan Smith. Morgan's 5'4 with blonde hair and blue eyes. And she never stops smiling. She's a junior at Lexington High School. That's contestant number 12, Morgan Smith. It looks weird, and, and you can you can kind of see it though when you walk. It's like you're kind of stepping on something, you know. Make it look natural, and now you look like you're stiff. <laughs> you look stiff. I don't know. Just just relax when you walk. Just you know, feel natural. Then you're gonna pose. I don't know how you guys do this. Remember never to look at the ground. Yeah, you want that big smile, girl? She does. Never mind. No, I'm nervous. So then I have to compete with um, everyone that's at the same level, you know? you know. So then I have to perform everything at a higher level in order to win. But see, it depends on who works the hardest in this pageant. Because all of us here, Miss Vietnam, Miss Chinatown, Miss Min, Miss Cambodia, Miss Mong, we're all equal right now. It just depends on who works harder for the crown. And breathe a sigh of relief and let it rise. But yeah, I'm disappointed. But it's okay. She'll do it again. She'll win. She will win. Mm, my dear. Can I look at this one to uh, Yeah. Fresh fries. Fresh fries, of course. I think that it can open a lot of doors for you and it can help you get noticed. You know, can speed up your future, I think, definitely. You'll no longer be, oh, that's just Monique Jones, but that's Miss USA Monique Jones. And I think it makes a difference and helps you get your name out there and stuff. I definitely want to be on the news at some point in my life. Um, hopefully not for doing anything wrong. Hopefully being a news anchor woman. So I think that that would help me a lot if I was Miss USA. Best thing I won. She won talent and um, a she, she placed uh, fourth in sportswear, second. second in western wear, and what was beauty? Second. Second in beauty. So. But I won talent. And you won talent. <laughs> <laughs> She's happy with that. A beauty queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a good experience. So really, I, I think it's just a case of um, coming back and saying I'm gonna do it again. And you know, to her, it's over now. It's fine. You know, 
You'll come back and do it again? Oh, yeah. I think so. The name of this pageant is the Catfish Stomp, and the reason I want to win it is because... Yay! I don't really know. <laughs> And I don't want you walking out there like this, okay? It's all tense. Just relax and come out there and come. Come your daddy's out there. Let me see you come out. I want that they want eye contact. They want you to look in your their eye, okay? So you can just stiffen up. You stiffen it up. Come on out again. Big. Don't switch the dress. Walk into it. Me and my mom, when we would go do pageants, we'd get along really well. That's how we get to know each other. When we go off, we get a little bit of each other. She tell me about her life, and I tell her about my school days and stuff, and we just have fun. The biggest thing I think Pageants has done for Cherie is it has give her something to do to keep her going without having a whole lot of stress, you know? It takes very minute effort to do that beauty walk. <laughs> You did good. That's the best you've done in a long time. Well, oh, no, you did good at children's stuff, too. Okay. Now, our best hair award goes to contestant number 47, Cherie Antoinette Vadrin. <laughs> our best dress, contestant number 47, Cherie Vadrin. Thank you. 